Hello everyone and welcome back to CLX Foundry Live where we dive deep into custom PC builds like this one and then assemble them from the ground up. I'm your host DJ Blue PDX and uh, joining me today of course as always our lead technical expert Paul Steffens and our master builder of the day it's Zach Hayden Hutchinsworth. Yes. <laughs> there we go. There we go. <laughs> Nailed it. All right. <laughs> All right, so um, first of all, we've got a great show scheduled for today. We've got a really interesting build that we're going to be putting together. Uh, we're also still running an amazing giveaway for that beauty right behind the boys, and that mm -hmm. is our Atmo Esports partnered giveaway for this month. It's an incredibly powerful machine, and it's coming with a bundle that includes driving apparatus and more. You definitely, if you haven't already got a chance to do this, jump in and get on it by typing give atmo now there are different opportunities for you to get codes that will help increase your chances to potentially win it you can find those here in the chat on our shows tuesdays and thursdays on our socials that's youtube TikTok, and twitter at clx gaming in the discord perhaps at discord.gg slash clx gaming or even on my stream and since i haven't streamed for a couple days because i've been installing this beautiful thing behind me um i'm gonna keep pointing over my shoulder because i'm so in love with it uh, you can also find them over on my stream, and today I'll definitely be giving out one. Who knows, maybe two. Uh, so that being said, gentlemen, we've got a fun build. What are we? Uh, what are we doing it for, and who are we doing it for? Yeah, so we're really I'm excited for this. We've got a custom configured raw that David from Texas did. So starting out, we've got our white NV7. Very excited to have one of these back on the back on I the show. I love these. So let me get this set up here. <laughs> <clears throat> Alrighty, so going inside of this is our Intel i9-12900K for our processor. We've got a Fantex Glacier 1 360 AIO to cool that. Um, for our motherboard, we've got Asus uh, Strix Z790-E gaming Wi-Fi, very high-end board there. Um, we got a total of 32 gigs of DDR5 6000 speed from uh, G-Skill. Um, for our storage, we've got a Kingston Fury Renegade, one terabyte M.2. We do not see those that often on the show, so really cool to have one of those. Uh, for our video card, we've got a 3080 12 gig, uh, 12 fans going in this beast, and a 1,000 watt EVGA G5 for our power supply. Nice. Uh, let's see, we've got uh, Cheslin Sierra, Cheslin Crew 94. Uh, hello from South Africa. Hello, South Africa. I hope everything's going hey. well for you there. Welcome. So, and, uh, uh-oh. Oh, no, there was an early bird code. Look at that. Atmo VK5X. That's virtually killing five times. <laughs> right? Yeah, that, that makes sense. Uh, <clears throat> there we go. So, obviously, behind me, you saw the PC that they built before, right before DreamHack, the week before DreamHack, and uh, it is alive and well and i've got it on blue right now because that's least problematic with my green screen i do have to figure out how to do it but um yeah at some point you know otherwise whenever i turn it looks like it's flipping in and out of existence whenever i turn anything that's green on it so <clears throat> that being said we've got a beautiful board right here uh this is the rog strix z790e gaming wi-fi motherboard now this motherboard is really impressive because it's got such a robust number of features on it from the incredible heat sinks and all of the io shielding and heat sinks there paul walk us through some of the best features about this board yeah, so some of the stuff that just stands out to me right off the bat is this top M.2 heat shield. You can see it's actually got this heat pipe coming up that we usually see in video cards. We've got this heat pipe that makes direct contact with the M.2 drive, comes up here and gets, um, there's fins cut into here that allows it to cool. So that part right there is probably the biggest thing that stands out. And then of course, it's got our PCIe clip release button there for yep, yep. Easy, uh, easy removal of whatever's in your top slot, obviously most likely a video card in there and while we've got it at that angle let's take a look at that uh, connectivity before we start installing everything so starting at the top on this board we've got your hdmi and d and uh display ports on the very top obviously we're not going to be using those because we'll have the graphics card right below that are your two uh usb 3.2 gen 1 ports and there are two more right below that. Those are all the blue ones. The red ones are seven USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, which is high speed right there. All those red ports are that. Plus, you've got a, a 
one that is type two by two. So you've got 10 up, 10 down, and that is gonna be good for both of those. You've also got the two and a half gig uh, dragon port for the ethernet, your Wi-Fi 6E, and of course, all of your audio right below that. <clears throat> Which is great. Yeah, something else I'd like to point out about this board too, that's just a little more of an aesthetic, is just the printing on the back of the Oh, wow, that is so looks nice. really cool. Really nice touch Even though there. you won't, you'll basically never see it, but at least it's there for the moment people will be like, ah. Mm -hmm. Now, I do want to point out all the intricate number of M.2 shields that mm. are down below. We've got multiple different points of access, but there's also significant cooling options that are down there. Uh, now, and of course, this device, I believe, holds four M.2s or five. Um, at least nope. five. I believe we got five, five on there here. Go. Yeah. This bottom one's kind of tricky because it's two slots at the bottom with one heat shield. So, yeah. Yep. Two PCIe 4.0, 16 slots and uh, one PCIe 5. I believe we're going to be using the 5 for the graphics card. As for the processor, we have got a strong contender. It's an i9-12900K processor. That's pretty beefy. Paul, what's this processor uh, offer for options and for features? Yeah, so this is a beast of a processor. It's a 16-core, 24-thread chip um, with a base speed of 3.2 and a boost clock of up to 5.2. Um, so that's broken down eight uh, performance cores and eight efficiency cores with having hyper threading on the performance cores. So that's how we get a total of 24 threads. Um, yeah, I mean, it's top of the line i9. Great processor here. Absolutely. I would great. like one in my system. Yep, right. <laughs> uh, this board also comes with Bluetooth 5.3 for those who are looking for the mm -hmm. latest and greatest in connectivity. I will say that. I haven't plugged in my antenna yet because I've got this thing hardlined, but I'm wondering if it like if there's any type of increase for connectivity if you put that 6E on. I would think that hardlining is your fastest way of connecting. Yeah, for sure, hardlining is. Mm -hmm. That really on these like the Wi-Fi is just kind of a backup, you know. Just in case. Just in case. All right. So looking at that heat shield, obviously you can see that piping that you had mentioned about that, the opportunity for cooling on that, that is extensive. Yeah, these are the biggest, like, this is the biggest M.2 heat shield I've seen on a motherboard. Now, ASUS does have these on their high-end ROG boards, um, but yeah, I don't know of any other boards that have the heat pipe direct contact to the uh, M.2 drive. Have you seen any, Zach? Um, just Strix right now. Yeah. Uh, don't forget that if you have questions about anything you see here or hear us mention, please make sure you ask in the chat. That's what we love to do is catch your questions. And so I will keep an eye on the chat to make sure that we are getting to all of those as quickly as possible. <clears throat> all right. So now that we've got this on. Mm -hmm. We will get into our AIO here. And then we'll right, get the so, mounting hardware out. So for this... Uh, David in Texas has chosen the Fantex Glacier One 360 ARGB AIO. Now, this is an all-in-one. It is a liquid cooler. And although I'm pretty sure a lot of you may already know what that means, Paul, what is the big difference between an AIO and other cooling methods? Yeah, so the big difference here with the AIO is this is obviously liquid cooling. So the other options will be an air cooler, which is typically that chunk of metal with a fan on top, some fins cut into it um, to cool it. Um, so yeah, the, using this AIO here is a great option that's easy to install, but will also provide great cooling. Um, the, three, the performance on the 360s on really any AIO is solid, but this Fantex one is the best that we have had as far as uh, yep. cooling for an AIO. And uh, we did have a question about what was it that Zach just installed. Zach installed the one terabyte Kingston Fury Renegade M.2 NVMe SSD. And of course, the interactivity on those is sort exceedingly fast because they are directly attached to the motherboard. I have all of mine are, are SSDs, so, mm -hmm. or are M.2s now. Hey. Now you mentioned that uh, the mounting bracket. So Zach, what did the mounting brackets do and how do you install them? 
Yes, so the mounting brackets will be very specific on which processor you're installing and which generation you are installing from the manufacturer. Um, so you want to make sure that you pick the right one. Um, and then really it's just make sure that you get it installed properly so that you get the best cooling for your system. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Okay, getting all those brackets down there. Now, one thing to mention, because we've got an NV7, the NV7 has a, a is a larger case, but it does allow for more fans to be on it because it's got two features that I find unique. The back of the case has two exhaust fan and the side can have up to four. So we've got 12 fans going on this, three of which will be attached to the AIO. As you can see, the thermal paste just got put on there. Less little stripe because they are more rectangular now. The Intel mm -hmm. processors. Yep, and I'm just removing the thermal paste that comes on it. Um, AIOs okay. will typically come with either thermal paste already on the block or they'll come with a separate tube of it. Um, so we are removing that thermal paste on there because this customer has chosen to upgrade their thermal paste. So. We've got a higher end thermal paste on there, which is going to equate to lower CPU temperatures, which will in turn give us higher boost clocks for a longer period of time. Gotcha. I will say I'm excited for uh, <clears throat> testing out the boost clocks today on the beautiful baby that I have behind me. Um, yeah. I'm going to put this thing through its paces. Yesterday, I just spent some time getting games set up and installed and game saves all on there. The only thing I'm missing is Dead Island 2, because it apparently does not support cloud save. Hmm. Which is bizarre. Yeah. So. Biggest wishes to win? Absolutely. All right. Now we're getting that power cord for the pump realigned. Why is it important to have that placed so that that cable is out of the way? Back. Um, yes, so ideally you want it out of the way so that you don't have to look at it, but you also want it um, out of the way properly so where it's not on top of your processor to where mm -hmm. it could get melted. I don't know Ooh, what I did right now. Good point. Uh, there is a question coming in from the Dirty Yankee. It has how much of a difference is the stock paste versus the upgraded temp, the upgraded temp wise? Yeah, so that will all depend on what CPU you're using. But for this 12900K that we're using, we're, we should see about a 5 to 10 degree difference right. using upgraded thermal paste in a gaming environment. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, th awesome. thermal paste Excellent can make a big deal. Can... Yeah, Ther thermal paste can definitely make a big deal. And that's why the, the higher end thermal paste do cost more, but you do get performance out of it. Thank you very much, 925-867-329. I uh, appreciate it. Wait, did I miss a question? <clears throat> no, it was the qu that was the question, yes. Uh, it could get, yes, we have so far. It was an early bird. It is absolutely use, used already. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that, that 10 degrees is definitely a, a big difference. Moving on to our RAM, let's talk about it. It's two 16 gig sticks of G-Skill DDR5 6000 RAM for a total of 32 gig, uh, which if I'm not mistaken is, I think what I have. No, I, I have Fury. There we go. There we go. Nicely Two done. Fans. I do like the way that, RG, that the RGBs on there are for those sticks. It's got that little wave in the middle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do look really nice. Moving on to our fans. These are three of our Game DS Aeolus M2 ARGB Blacks. Wow. Uh, Zombie Rain mentions that on my R7, the upgraded paste made it nearly 15 degrees difference. I don't go over 70 now. There you go. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, and now I've got the little, I keep looking at the little screen going, okay, what's it doing now? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I believe I answered that, did I not? The difference in the thermal paste? Yeah, we got that one to Shio. Hello, welcome, what's up? All 
So it was really great when we were in, when we were upgrading those systems at DreamHack. Zach has this. I, I don't. People might have seen it. And we've talked about it a couple times. But Zach has this strap-on tool set that looks like it looks like the gun holster of Han Solo. But oh, thank you. Appreciate it. And it's probably one of the most handy things I've ever seen because it's surgical at that point. <laughs> I had a guy come up to me and he was, uh, he asked what it was and I told him and he goes, I'm in charge of a, like a kid's robotics team and I've been looking for a good tool belt, but all the tool belts I find are like not what they need. And he's like, that yeah. looks pretty good. And all it is is just a drop leg gun holster with just tools on it instead. So it ah, works. That's great. That is absolutely great. Yeah, Dirty Yankee, I'm excited about it. It's, uh, again, I, I had to I had to flip my entire studio 180 degrees so that now the back of the streaming area is facing the DJ equipment. It's right, the DJ equipment is right on the other side, and I no longer have a separating wall. Um, that way I could display this, because otherwise there was no way it was going to be behind me. <laughs> there just wasn't enough room. But actually, this kind of opens up the room a little bit. Now, I will say, I noticed this is, has a few more steps to take apart than other cases. Yeah, so the side panels on this, this is obviously the new NV7. We're all big fans of this case here, honestly. This thing yeah. is great. Um, but taking the side panels off, it is a little different because there's no beam in there. It's just all open um, at the front on the left side of the screen, if you see there, which is really cool. Um, but on the back of this too, which we'll show at the end, there's an actual door that covers up all your I.O. Um, so that needs to be taken off as well. Nice. Uh, how long did it take, my, to take, the, take me to get the box inside? So the box got delivered downstairs. Uh, <laughs> can I tell, can I tell this thing. story? <laughs> Might as well, yeah, yeah, you should. It it's good. your story. Okay, so I have like, there are 18, 18 steps to get up to my front porch, okay? And it's straight up. They're not easy. And so these, you know, it's a giant, uh, it is a trek. And I was, I was wondering if they were just going to leave it at the bottom of the stairs or, you know, or anything. I'm waiting upstairs. I don't hear a knock. Kevin comes home and he's like, so where is it? I said, I'm, I said, I'm still waiting. And we got till seven. And he says, okay. And he went downstairs and he shouts at me. He's like, yo, what is this? And I walk over and look down over the edge. And sure enough, sitting right between, right up against the garage door, but right between the trash can and the recycling can is this giant CLX crate. And I thought, huh, they did. Like, wish they oh did not. Man, it's here. <laughs> <laughs> and, and of course, my dogs didn't bark at all. I don't know how my dogs missed that being moved there. And they bark at the blowing of the wind but they didn't bark at that these guys are ninjas I'm telling you ninjas they were awesome um but yeah so we just carried it through the garage and through the glass studio into the studio into the broadcast studio yeah. but all right so now we've got these four fans going on the side obviously this is one of the cool features about this because it's got such increased airflow uh up on that back end and so these are right here is for the bottom mount correct or is this for the side this is for the back side, yes. Got it, okay. So that'll be going right here. Where you see this mesh, it'll be on the other side of this mesh. So right, that tall stack will be right in here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Dirty Yankee, it was well disguised. I mean, honestly, I pretty, not, pretty much the, a safe space to put that in was right there. Because nobody would have seen it. I didn't see it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. We got it out. It is now being used as the uh, stand for it, which is not conductive for electricity. So what I hear is uh, the next convention you're going to, you're taking it with you. Mm -hmm. Oh, going to the BYOC. Absolutely no. You think I have time to play in the BYOC? You gotta. <laughs> you're gonna have to train. He's just going to show up looking like an Olympian, mm -hmm. carrying his crate in one arm. <laughs> 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 
Yeah, Yankee, I mean, honestly, it totally. Shipping in that, yeah. Mm hmm. And Tim you know, said, My friend's computer should be shipping in the next few days. I showed them the video you posted of the box. They were like, It's shipping in that. Yes, it definitely, definitely is. And we live in a very, a, a rather safe neighborhood. So, I mean, I'm not super, wasn't super worried about it. I just wish they'd knock to the door. Yeah, that's the worst when you're like, I've been waiting all day for this. And they're like, It's been there. Like, what? It's there. <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh. oh god yeah don that you know as jason just pointed out it's a good thing it wasn't trash day trash day mm -hmm. is friday uh otherwise it might have gotten yeah, have that would have been really there. problematic but i'm running both cables out the top one is that fine or do you want them out this you hole? can do either one paul i kind of like I running can, them out of the same hole i can work either way all right i call that my flexibility charm oh yeah <laughs> I'm installing the two back fans here, because um, really yes, this this good. just has so many fans in this case. Just kind of trying to chip in a little bit here. Um, you know, Sasco, they they have obviously with the with the glass business. There's a lot of deliveries that happen here, um, but I'm fairly certain that the guy who delivered this was with another with the other driver that's usually on this route and they both know that <clears throat> the dogs are nuts mean. and loud what i mean they're just Huge. very large and very very loud oh, yeah, that's... and i i already know they've scared the crap out of a couple different drivers and yeah even though they're very innocent ish yeah big size <laughs> dogs are are good that way yeah, mm -hmm. our our mailman stopped coming to our neighborhood because of a chihuahua up the block, <laughs> and like our lab that we had was just like the biggest like pet me dog ever. You know how labs <laughs> always are, and he was like distraught when the mailman stopped coming to the door. Dang, it was like a sad life event. For it the was dog. Like, like, yeah, no. it was like, where's my oh, friend? Well, a little chihuahua ruined it for you, dude. <laughs> Did you have the lab when it was a puppy? Yeah. So did it take a long time for it to calm? Or how old is the lab? Uh, he's like eight. Now. Eight? Yeah. My lab is over a, over one now, and she's still psycho. Oh, oh yeah. And I'm oh, like, yeah. some people say two, some people say four years. Yeah, dogs are psycho for. And I'm a like, while. I just want you to yeah. calm down. But yeah, our our boys are three years old, and they are uh, still. Still get the puppy crazies. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's it's nuts. Like she's really smart. She does good, but it's just like, hey, I need you to relax a little bit. I need you to just bring it down. Bring it down a notch. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're here, and I need you to be here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's it. Our dogs have gotten into the habit of playing London Bridge constantly. Like, if you're not paying attention, they will come behind you. And then shove their head while you're walking. Shove their head between your oh knees and try and go between your legs. And I'm like, this worked when you were a puppy. This is not comfortable now. And I'm, uh, when Alfie does it, he's tall enough that if he stands up, I'm off my feet. I will. I am. Oh my goodness. I am on the ground. That's and then he looks funny. at me like, "What did you do? <laughs> Why are you falling over?" Okay. Yeah, you're like, I can't help side. it. They're huge. <clears throat> Captain Kate, hello. Uh, that going. I'll oh, put this in flowers. Okay. So these chunk oh. of four fans are going in. Now let's see if we if that angle yeah. can work for you, Zach. It's probably right. be good. So another nice thing we've been seeing with new cases is the way the fans are mounted. You can actually take the bracket that mounts them out, install them like Zach did, and put them in. This is really nice. So he can just put a whole chunk of fans in at one time. And there's just some tabs that that goes into at the bottom there, and then a set screw holds it in up top. Yeah. Um, can I answer this question? So, there we go. Uh, we had a question coming in in the general chat of the Discord um, about why sometimes things lag. And if you're on cable, 
and you're in a very busy neighborhood or you're in an apartment complex, there's usually only one node per area. And so if you've got a lot of traffic and a lot of people access the internet, like usually after five o'clock, between like five and nine, then, well, yeah. <laughs> Looks like bandwidth. That's clearly not it. Okay. So, larger breeds have puppies until they're four years old. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. That makes me sad. Agreed. She's like 70 pounds, too. She's like 72 pounds. She's, I don't, I don't know if that's big for a one-year-old lab, but it seems very big. How big are her paws? Huge. Yeah, she's, she's gonna got get the big, big paws. She's gonna get big, yeah. man. Like, oh. All right. She like, um, I've got one of those Maxnomic chairs with the two arms that adjust. I didn't even realize it last night I was gaming. She just pulled one of the arms off and was chewing on it. I'm like, homie, you can't do that. <laughs> like, come on. This is just a normal nine. Normal nine? Yeah. All right. So, going into the motherboard next. Mounting All this right. bad boy. And while we're doing that, let's point out those standoffs. Great shot for the standoffs right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so those metal pieces you can see that the motherboard is... Yeah, this is a perfect shot for this. So yeah. I think it's with the NZ, NV7 height, it just really shows it well. So yeah, you can see that's exactly what the standoffs are doing. The motherboard is actually sitting on the standoff so that it's not making any contact with the frame of the case because contact with the case could cause something to short out. Um, so when you're installing your motherboard, uh, just make sure you have the standoffs in the right spots with the mounting holes. Uh, you don't want to have any extra standoffs because those could be making contact with the motherboard in a spot where you don't want that to happen. So. Um, just make sure you have that in and then we'll put these mounting screws in and our board will be mounted. Alrighty. All nine of them. <clears throat> Still loving the button. Uh, I have a question that I saw in chat. What is our yeah. liquid cooler fan configuration, Paul? Yeah, so we are pushing air through our radiator. We have these in a push configuration. So um, when you're installing fans on a radiator, you can um, install them in a couple different ways. So the way we have it here, and this is the preferred method, is to be pushing air through the radiator. If we had the fans in the same orientation, but on the back side, they'd be pulling air through the radiator. Um, that will still function and will still provide decent cooling, but it's not as good as pushing air through. Um, now, if you've got extra fans and extra room in the budget like DJ did on his build, you can do a push-pull, which is having fans yeah. on both sides of the radiator, and that provides even better cooling. Um, it's honestly not a very common thing you see, um, but you can do it if you've, got the, if you've got the room in your case and the room in your budget. Yeah, I will say that, uh, and I mentioned this before the show, the, like the green screen behind me, I have to prop it back because the suction is so strong, it's pulling the, pulls the green screen right up against the case. Mm. Uh, B-Wades, we did drop one for the early birds. It was for 25 people first. Let's see here. All right, getting all of this on there. I do like the white and black internal. Mm -hmm. I do too. Very <clears throat> the black motherboard goes well with the black fans for sure. Yeah. Yeah. What do I do? I want these. That's funny, Shasta. The dog sitting in your lap at 40 pounds. Yep, that's what my dog does. She's way bigger than any of our laps, but she still thinks she can fit in there. This is at eight weeks. My Great Dane was 25 pounds. At eight weeks? Oh, boy. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it was just 20. He was a li little bit just solid. And mm. they grew so fast. Like, they were only puppy size for maybe a month. <laughs> wow. <laughs> they, they, just, they would literally grow overnight to the point where we'd go to sleep and wake up the next day, and they were visibly bigger. <laughs> and Jeez. as uncoordinated as you could possibly imagine. Just nothing but giant floppy ears and paws the size of baseballs. Yeah. That's funny tripping over everything. <laughs> oh god, yeah. Yeah. Tripping <laughs> tripping over each other. <laughs> yeah. 
perfect. Uh, looks too matter. <laughs> Nothing dude says full white build with RGB are way better. Uh, I made a mistake of going for straight power in an all black uh, with no RGB. Looks do matter. I mean, I'll be honest. I know that it would perform just as well regardless of the lighting, but I have to agree. It's pretty pimp. And uh, one of the last people to ever have gotten this board, too. Because they just... <clears throat> uh, discontinued that one for the new Z790 version with a 790 chipset this thing has some pac-man aesthetics on it too which i'm just now noticing that's pretty cool oh yeah yeah there's like a tiny little um pac -Man. it's gonna be hard to get it on stream but um uh, you mind if i is yeah, that, is go that good it. zach yeah there's a little bit of it here. I'm gonna rotate this to try to catch the light. Oh yeah. Perfect. Oh wow. I... Right here. So there's that right yeah. there. There's some all around. That's kind of cool. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. That's how you know it's for gaming. Mm -hmm. Right? <clears throat> they got Pac-Man on there. There you go. <laughs> Radical says RGB adds 200 megahertz at least. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> Okay, getting all these fans put in here. Now, one thing to note about this is, uh, and this is a great example right here. One thing to note about this case is it sits at an angle, which is unique because of the way that it provides airflow. Mm -hmm. Notice the angle on the bottom, which is where the lower three fans are gonna go. That doesn't blow straight up into your graphics card. It actually blows out. So your graphics card's getting fresh air, but it's also sending fresh air across the glass, cooling it, allowing for better heat distribution and also, for better uh, air circulation. Mm -hmm. And this also comes with magnetic filters. Let's show those off real quick. Yeah, so I'll just pull the one out of the bottom um, real quick. So this one is like a tray and it just slides right out there. It obviously sits in there at the angle, um, but really fine filter on this. Obviously really easy to change. You just slide it out wipe it down and slide it back in. You'll be able to see it through some of these grills as I'm sliding it back in. Alrighty. There we go. Easy peasy. So, Zach, is it more difficult to have to assemble all and wire all the fans compared to, say, a build with only 9 or 10? Uh, because this has 12? Yeah. No, not really. Um, not until you add like bigger fans, like um, thermal take RG adjustable RGB fans, uh, just because Got those it, okay. have like a cable that's like from like Very Paul long. to me. Uh -huh. And so like once you add 12 fans, then it is like, oh my gosh, what are we doing with miles of cable here? Yeah. Um, but yeah, for the most part, this is uh, pretty pretty standard on getting it done and making it look pretty. Nice. Just gonna go ahead and remove. Sounds good. Okay. We might as well show this video card. Close up top. Real quick, since yeah, I've already got it out of box. Let's talk about this video shot. card. This is back to one of the most popular cards they made for a very, very long time. This is the GeForce RTX 3080. These Brand things new. are monsters. Big monsters. Now, granted, I because of that size and weight, I don't think we'll need a uh, mounting strap or bracket. No. Yeah, we bracket, will not need yeah. an anti-sag bracket for this, but... We've got it right here. This is the Tough Gaming Edition. I really like the aesthetic, the heat shield that they've put on this around the fans. Yeah. And then obviously our back plate looks really nice as well. So this has two standard 8-pin power connectors, which I also really like. Mm -hmm. Not really a huge fan of the dongles that are um, becoming more of a recent thing. So I really like that it's just got two 8s. Um, 
And yeah, just a really solid card here. I was just telling Zach before the show, this is what I will be upgrading to soon enough. Nice. 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 And for just because we have the time to do so, mm -hmm. let's talk about how these cards function. Because a lot of times you don't really think about the fact that the video card processor actually, in some cases, gets hotter than the CPU. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... Um... So we can break this down. I've got our sample card here that we'll use that I'll pull the uh, heat shields off of. So this is our 3080 that we just showed. And then I have a sample card here that's a 1050 Ti, EVGA 1050 Ti. So we will put this in a museum um, mm. some years from now. <laughs> <laughs> but um, really, so I've taken the mounting screws out of the heat sink and fans just to really show everybody what a video card entails. So if you get into it, this is just your video card right here. So this 3080 that we have, the giant 4090s, all of them are just this thin. Now, obviously some of the PCBs are a little bit longer, um, but this is what your video card is. That chip that you see the thermal paste on, that's your GPU itself. And we've got our memory chips around here soldered into the PCB. <coughs> um, so really when you're looking at a giant card that's really huge, the bulk of it is just for the heat sink and the fans to keep it cool which is just wild. Mm -hmm. And they just keep getting bigger. They really do. Okay. Getting those secondary fans on the back. Now, this is something that I will say is what I really like about this case, but I also don't think I've ever seen it on another case. This has a dual fan exhaust on the back. Yeah, so this is exactly. the first one that I've seen. That? Yeah, not common at all. This is the first case I have seen oh, um, that has that. 1000D has yeah. one. Yeah, and that 1000D is huge, too. Um, so, yeah, really cool. It's definitely one of the first things that kind of catches your eye when there's fans installed in this system. They're like, whoa, two exhaust fans. So it's just another kind of flashy, cool part about this case. Nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, get those back on there. One of the cool things that we are going to talk about here in just a little bit is the uniqueness of that back panel. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, you know, you, you get your PC and the back end of it where everything goes and connects is just not necessarily the prettiest thing to look at. They've solved that problem by creating a, a, a guidance a comb, a guidance and comb system for all of your cables that have a door that covers it at the end. Yeah, so yeah, like you said, that the back part of the case is kind of an area where aesthetically doesn't get a lot of love. So on this machine here, it's the IO shield is sunken in a little bit. And that way you can you can see our motherboard IO shield here is kind of deep down in there. And we've got all these fingers for once we plug all of our components into, we can sort the cables through these fingers here and then our power cable down here. Um, and then the door goes on to cover it up. So even if you're looking at this from the back, sometimes people will see this case from the back and think it's the front, um, just for how clean it looks. So this door is just on yeah. hinges, <clears throat> if I can get it on here. So it just slides on like this, and then you shut it out. There's, that's what these grooves are here. So if you have cables that are gonna come out this side, they can come out through these grooves and look nice and neat. And you just kind of get your finger in right here. It's just held in by magnets. So it just opens up like that. Yeah, definitely one of those things that I was super shocked by when we saw this at Twitch. I mean, I saw this at PAX. Mm -hmm. um, I was just blown away by it. Yeah, yeah, right, Pulse? It's a very clean build. Yeah, the fact that the door is on a swivel, it's almost a must for me because there has been some cases in the past with the sunken in IO shield with a cover, but that cover um, on the other, the other cases was held in by screws. So anytime you had to like, oh, I got a new keyboard or I want to plug in my stream deck or whatever, you had to like get a screwdriver and take the screws out and do it. And that was always annoying to me. So having it on a door, I think is the right solution for that. I uh, got a couple questions coming in from the chat. Uh, no poll says, can we go back to 3D FX cards? That would be interesting. Uh, Jedi Smuggler asks, what do dual fan exhausts do? And the answer that came in from uh, from Cheslin says, if I stand correct, dual exhausts just make more take more heat out of the uh, PC as to have as opposed to have just having one fan. 
Yeah, that's correct. It's just an extra fan to help get airflow and, and for since this one's exhaust, help get the air out of the case. So this is obviously a pretty large case. So we've got um, seven fans for our intake here, these three at the bottom and the four right here. And we've got our two exhaust and then our three at the top. So we have seven intakes and five exhausts. There we go. Now that does create a bit of a pressure differential. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there will. How does be... that affect? Uh... Go ahead. I said, yeah, there will be a little bit of a pressure differential here. Now, if you Google the pressure difference in your system and what that means, you'll probably find all sorts of different answers leaning that positive is better or negative is better. Really, my professional opinion is, as if it's somewhat's balanced, that's fine. If you're um, really skewed in one way or the other. I don't really see that as an issue either. The, the thing to keep an eye on is just your overall temps. So if your case feels hot or if your temps are high and that that's when maybe look at it. But I haven't seen any sort of arrangement that has been like detrimental to the yeah. temperatures of the system. So. And I have a I have nine, nine inflow and four outflow. Oh, yeah. OK. I just realized. Yeah, because that double on the back. Uh huh. <laughs> But again, and this thing just doesn't get hot. I'm just so yeah. amazed about it. Yeah, I think the positive and negative pressure is kind of like the static pressure thing with fans. It's kind of a <clears throat> There are a cases con that like are made for negative pressure mm -hmm. or made for positive pressure. And that's oh. where like you do need to pay attention. But most for the, those are more of like a niche case yeah. and not like, hey, I'm going down to the box store and going to buy a case off of the shelf right. there. It's like, I'm ordering this. Yeah, for this purpose. For this yeah. reason. Interesting. Yeah. It's, it's really like the fan quality of just generic fans has just gone up so much in the last five years that pretty much every fan you get is going to perform pretty well. Obviously, there's the high-end ones that, you know, perform the best. But, you know, the standard fan quality has just gone up over the years. Okay, now we're getting all the fans plugged in. So these fans require a controller, and this controller is unique because it can be daisy chain. Zach, tell us about these controllers and how they work to manage the fans. Yes, so each controller can hold eight fans. Um, and then we haven't tested it yet, but in theory, we should be able to just continue daisying them together as long as we have enough power and we can power as many fans but this just allows us to have all of our fans connected in one terminal or two depending on if we're getting more than eight fans so yeah this is kind of the closest we've we've come to filling up that second um fan <laughs> control box you know, typically we bring yeah. in a second fan control box um, when it's a 10 fan ten, configuration. So yeah, nine and 10. So having it at 12 is pretty cool. I have half the box filled. One day there'll be a 15. Yeah, right, yep. Um, and both yeah, we these- We 13 uh, and it was nuts. Yeah, mm. that's right, yeah. So, and both those fan control boxes, they come with the cable where you daisy chain them together. So they're, they're all synced up with one press of the remote and both will have their own SATA power to power them. <clears throat> okay now interestingly enough there's also so one thing that i do love about this case and fantex does a really good job with this it's the velcro straps to aid in how you guide your wire bundles mm -hmm. yeah these velcro Not something straps you typically are... see on all builds yeah yeah as far as i know or, or what i've seen i'm sure a lot of companies do it but the most that we've seen here is really fantex doing that. We really started seeing that with their P300 and P400, which are uh, smaller mid tower cases. And then in the Fantex Evolve X and the P500 as well. That's where we really make good use of those Velcro straps because you almost don't need to use zip ties. We still do because it just gives it a really good look having them kind of in mm -hmm. one bundle. But if you were in a situation where you didn't have zip ties, those Velcro straps work great for routing your cables. Yeah, absolutely agree. And of course, this also has an interesting little feature on the back that panel. Little, yeah, mm -hmm. What was that, DJ? Because Sorry. this also has an interesting little element on the back panel where you've got uh, different ways of routing the your your 18-pin, 24-pin. 
Mm -hmm. Yes, that door on the back. Yeah, so yeah. Zach's kind of messing with one of those doors right now. Now it's not the 24 pin door, but we'll uh, we'll get into that. So this door right here will open up, and this is the first time I've seen on this case. You see these two big uh, long posts right here, and that is for wrapping the slack out around any cable. Now the main one we use is the 24 pin there, wrapping our extra slack from a 24 pin around there, and then it tucks it inside. And it's also got room for a couple two and a half inch drives right here. I'll get this shut and get my hands out of Zach's way real quick. Oh, you're good. I'm there just go. kind of struggle busting lining up. Sometimes, man, those hinges can fight you sometimes. I was happy I got the back door on because yeah. sometimes it's like you get one in and your eyes can't look at two different directions. You got to get some like iguana eyes yeah. going on. Chameleon right. eyes, iguana. Do iguanas do that or is it chameleons? Uh, I, I can't don't remember. talk to iguanas at all. You know. Yeah, not a fan. I am definitely not a fan of iguanas. Yeah? yeah. I'm trying to think which, do iguanas' eyes go in opposite directions or it's is it just chameleon. chameleon? No, no, it's, you're, you're thinking of a chameleon. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking yeah. of. Ge no, geckos. Geckos? No, chameleon, Maybe yeah. there's a couple. The chameleons have those little cone eyes that... <clears throat> yeah, they're like cyberpunk Look all eyes. over the place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's also how they change color. And I wonder what that looks like inside the brain there. Right? I don't know how that image processes. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, now we're seeing how the Getting sausage those all is made. Off. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Got the Oops. lower panels on. Okay. Yeah, so really a lot of the cable the management um, we do at the beginning, like getting these fans done in our, in our case, like this just really helps us at the end and, and just allows us to, once this is all managed, we can just install everything and kind of go through yeah. it pretty quick. Delay and RL, thank you so much. So glad to have you here. We've got a question coming in from Cheslin. Uh, do you guys do international shipping? Just asking for future reference to one day if I have funds for a gaming PC. Yes, we do, with a little asterisk there on some countries that we can't ship to. Um, but yes, we do do international shipping to most countries. Take these cables out of the power supply, or would yeah. you like them in it? Okay. So I'm gonna. We had our cables plugged into our power supply here to make sure we had all the right ones. So I'm gonna unplug those from our modular power supply here, so we can talk about that a little bit. Okay. So for our power supply, and this is going to be a fun one, we've got a 1,000-watt EVGA Supernova G580 plus gold. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's just a box, so I'm guessing that that's modular. Yes, yeah, so this is fully modular power supply here, and what that means is none of the cables are pre-soldered into this. You can see this is the power supply itself. It's obviously where the power cable goes in and plugs into the wall. Um, and these are all our connections for the various cables that we're going to use. So um, just a really good thing about modular power supplies is you only have to use the cables that you need. So you don't have a bunch of extra cables left over in your system that you have to bundle up and, and worry about putting in the right spots. Um, so I would always recommend going with a modular power supply. It is a part of the build that you can um, save some money on if you go with a non-modular. So if budget is tight, that is a place that I would look um, to without sacrificing performance. So, um, but if you can go modular, do it, you know, every time you're tying up your system or say we install a, a couple extra hard drives in this, all we have to do is plug in the cable. You don't have to worry about finding the SATAs in there or upgrading our power supply just to get a few more SATAs. Or worrying about extra cables in the case that mm -hmm. are not needed. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> uh, one thing to note is well, not really. This is not technically a two-thirds build, is it? Um, I mean, 
kind Good, of sort of it's, it's probably it's, uh, yeah. i don't know if it's exactly two-thirds but the uh, same same concept our power same supply power. will not be in yeah. the main body of the <clears> case <throat> So that big hole you see at the top there on the back side next to those two fans, that's where our power supply is going to mount. And it's going to get fresh air in from this side of the case and the fan is going to exhaust it right out the back. So none of the heat from that power supply is going to be in the main body of the case. Um, now if this system had any extra two and a half inch or three and a half inch drives, those are also stored on the back side of the case. Um, so that, that's nice as well. Awesome. That is going to be lit. Uh, ATMO-TRLL is definitely a, not a code. <laughs> it is a troll code. Yep. And um, Sasco, yes, we do ship all the extra cables in the accessory box. So um, sometimes you don't get all the cables with the power supply, but if, that are, if you ever get a machine from us that's modular and you, you use all the extra cables and you still need another one, you can just reach out to us. We'll, we'll find one in our warehouse and ship it to you. But yes, you will get the extra cables there in you your go. accessory box. Yeah, I got a big old box with all sorts of stuff in it. Yeah. Which is cool. Again, I'm so excited to game on this thing today. <laughs> I'm excited for you. Yeah. yeah, you got you got you got a beast behind you there. Yeah, this thing is, and again, it the responsiveness to things, the load times with this thing. I really didn't think it was going to be that big of a difference, and it's a massive difference. We got people with the code hype in the chat. Ooh, some code oh, hype. That no looks code like until a lot DJ of posts. Posts. Okay. Pull the blaster. Get wrecked. Lots of hype in the chat. Let's go. Hype, hype, hype. All righty. Cables. Cables. So another cool thing about modular power supplies is I can, Zach can install these cables without actually having his power supply installed. So that's also oh. just really nice from an assembly point of view. Save you some hassle, makes your life easier. All right, there we go. <laughs> there we go. Atmo FCQJ. First collective question jury for quick justice yes there we go it's an unlimited code which means it's worth 200 entries uh and anybody and everybody can use it so make sure you grab that right there that is amazing so now everybody's picked up we've got 300 entries excuse me nice. giving out city on the show 100 for 25 BPI and 200 for everybody. Okay. We're getting that all pushed through on the back. Yeah, we want to. Yeah. I do like the fact that, the, that, that it's got braiding on the cables. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, yeah. Even the stock uh, EVGA cables do come with that nice mesh braiding. Um, yeah. Yeah, it is good. It's a nice touch. It's got a very clean look to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it does a good job of protecting the cables as well. Yeah. Okay. I'll take the power supply. Power supply. Twist it. Thank you. Oh, yeah, you can see our power supply going in there. So that side that you're seeing right yep. now is the fan. So that will be where the air is coming in at. And then, like I said, it'll be exhausting out this side, out the back right here. All we got to do is get it screwed into place, and we're good to go. Mm -hmm. And then it's just about wiring. More wiring. Yep. So I'm thinking <clears throat> that we should go talk about how other people can get machines like this built for them from CLX Gaming. There we go. At clxgaming.com, you can head over there to find out all of your, to answer all your needs and to ensure that you get a PC that's built the way you want it, designed for you to meet your needs, whether you're a video producer or you're processing audio, you're gaming, you're streaming, 
there are many different configurations and each of them can be decided by you. And don't worry, you don't have to be an expert when you're choosing the components. We have a foolproof system designed to ensure that you don't end up getting incompatible hardware. In our configurator, in the event that you accidentally choose something that's not compatible, you'll see that green button turn to, turn to yellow and it'll say solve conflicts. So for example, if you have a DDR5 board, but you chose DDR4 RAM, it's gonna give you two different options. It's gonna say, all right, you can use this RAM with these different boards or use these different RAM or use this RAM with the board that you'd selected. Therefore, ensuring that you have full compatibility on your system. We do everything from peripherals to clothing. You can even go over to the far side of the accessories and check out, you can get one of these nice windbreakers. Love this thing. From t-shirts to hats to ball caps, you name it, we got it. But don't worry, you don't have to be a professional or even venture into building your own PC if that's not your thing. We have dozens of ready to ship models that are already looking for a home and who knows, that home might just be yours. So for everything from special editions to standard ones that you can decorate on your own, check out clxgaming.com. And those special editions are actually really pretty. We've got a ton of those. So many different colors and designs. Yeah, the special editions is definitely one of the one of the cool, my favorite things that we do here. Um, we have custom paintwork done, custom print designs that get done on the machines. They just look really good. <clears throat> yep. <clears throat> so many different options. I dig it. Mm -hmm. The raw editions, the vice editions, the sakura. That's a fun. Yep. Oh, yeah, you can also get them custom designed like the one that's behind Zach, if you notice. That is the Lost Drake's PC, and once he's back home from vacation, I'm sure that he's going to get that. But, yeah, custom designed, worked with uh, main, I mean, artist Kyle, and they uh, popped that little thing out. I say little, it is amazing, huge, and well designed. Okay. We are down to the final steps. So, Zach, walk us through what's going on now. Um, yeah, right. It's yeah. like, yeah, it's so funny. We always try to grab the uh, a lot of that that part of the case, and that part of the case yeah, ain't right, there. It's <laughs> not there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So, just doing cable management. Um. Kind of doing one cable at a time. So behind our behind door number one, we have. <laughs> CPU cables and 24 pin cables, well hid and well okay. managed to where all that we have is just the little bit that goes up to the power, which is very nice because yes, we have a lot of room to store stuff. You can see I have mounted a fan controller back in the room there. So that's where one of my fan controllers is at. And fan controller number two is behind door number two and it's hidden inside just slides right in to where SSDs get slid so it's easy access can just get pulled right out <clears throat> it's not nice attached but just kind of hidden and out of the way so I like that that's a good spot for that second one right in there yeah yeah I didn't I, I don't think we've ever covered that before that's great again lots of little tricks to this guy lots of little mm. tricks to this case Zach's got all the experience I just, it, it, it clicks in my brain, guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there are other things that don't, so. <laughs> Reaching to the choir there, bud. <laughs> I see in Lego Some code. things make sense. Some yeah. things I just don't care. Okay, I want, can I do that a little bit better? Oh, yeah. All righty. See, I'd have been just like having to eyeball trace everything to make sure I had everything going in the right spot because I just don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, when you get to the back of your system and doing the tie-up, it's definitely the most overwhelming part. Um, so kind of taking it in chunks and doing it in small sections is really the way to go. Like you can kind of see when Zach turned the system around, he had pretty much every cable managed and he left his SATA cables kind of hanging out. Just kind of as like an obvious, like this is where, this is what I'm working with next. You know, and once these are done, we'll move on to the next part. 
Nice. A lot of times these bigger cases are a little bit easier to play in than the smaller cases just because you do have the room to mm -hmm. stick stuff kind of where you need it over just like, oh, I guess this is getting smushed right here right now. Yeah, yeah, I remember doing my first P200. It was mm -hmm. like, oh my goodness. Like you just bundle everything as tight as you can and like layer it like a lasagna or something yeah. in there. And, and hope that it's not too thick. Yeah, yeah. Okay, come back though. All right, let's do... Okay, the no post thing is what gets okay. me all yeah. the time. Yep, <laughs> I keep seeing you reach over for it. Connor and I talk about it like that's our biggest beef with the case. Like we both love the case and want the case, but we always go to grab right there. Yeah. And it's just, yeah. it, it just throws you off enough to where you're like, man, what's it going to be? Two. Oh, yep. Sorry. Two. Uh, this is probably a. Maybe a two and a half slot card, a little bit longer, but we've got two posts that will get screwed in. Okay. Of course, this is gonna mount right into that slot there that does have the eject button mm -hmm. positioned perfectly on the board. Oh man, I wonder, it's covering up this little mirror. I wonder if that will hmm. do any colors. Oh, Interesting. Lord. That's the right size for a video card right there. Mm-hmm. Yep. <clears throat> and the right amount of plugins. Mm hmm. <laughs> Not some monster of a plugin yet. Yeah. <clears throat> All righty. What? Okay, getting those final cables in place. Yeah, these are the last two cables we got to do, and then we'll slap the panels on there and get this thing turned on. invented the modular mr modular um was a great man seriously yeah <clears throat> all right here we go oh. okay. all right. <laughs> watching him watch the camera <laughs> all right here we go sorry i can't do new stuff well so we'll just go this way with it but yeah like paul was saying you know um the Velcro straps and it's covered up with not a whole lot of zip ties. Everything's all in its place. Mm -hmm. Mr. Modular is a good business name. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be a new brand yes, of power yes, supplies here soon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Called Mr. Modular. It's a good business idea. Alrighty, let's turn All right. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Beautiful. Back. Look at that. Back. Ta -da! Look at that. Gorgeous. <clears throat> All right, so we've got some RGB covers that Zach will be throwing on here in just a sec, and then we'll be putting our panels on. So I hope this was too be, fast. Yeah. So I'll kind of go over what happens once we get this machine built and it turns on. So this machine, like every machine we've done, DJ's the one he's got behind him there, Drake's here, and our giveaway system in the back. Every machine, once it's turned on, it then goes into our testing and integration department. And so the first thing we do there is get into our BIOS, so we'll make sure all of our storage devices are showing up. Um, sometimes there's some settings in there. If you picked overclocking, that's where we would uh, 
start overclocking your system and then after that we load the operating system and any games that you may have picked out if you didn't pick any games you get a fresh install of windows we don't install any bloatware on our machines it's definitely something we pride ourselves on if you just want a clean install that's what you're going to get um, and then after that we stress test the system for 12 hours so we've got a few benchmarking softwares we use for that the main one being 3d mark um, and what that allows us to do is a component in this may turn on, but once it gets into a gaming environment, it may cause the system to fail. So doing that 12 hour stress test allows us to catch those components there and make sure we deliver a stable system. What up, Elm? Elm FPS, also known as Hayden. Good old uh, Hayden's in, in here. in the chat. Yeah, look at this thing. The Hayden, but Hayden, Hayden has the joy of being able to build this. Hayden Haydenson? Hayden Haydenson. Yes. Hayden Zackingsworth. <laughs> yeah. Aiden, Zach, and Steph. Here we go. I imagine DJ would thoroughly love the CLX conversations we have. Yeah. We have a multiverse that is mm -hmm. just based off of the building, and so we just oh God. we've created different scenarios. And I like I like the one where Hayden and I have the same name. That's that's a pretty that's good, a good one. one. Just mash together. <laughs> DJ, one of the universes, Hayden is seven foot two. That's still still He's a giant. still skinny. Just seven foot but, two. <laughs> but seven foot two. That is what that would yeah. He wouldn't be able to fit in, on screen if he was seven foot two though. Like, can you imagine standing next to Paul at seven foot two and makes Paul look small? Like, it would look, he'd have to literally look squat like half the Hayden time. Hayden and me, but opposite. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <That> funny. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. Was it you, DJ, when you saw Hayden at DreamHack? You're like, I didn't know you were going to be that tall. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Apparently the camera takes off a couple inches. Yeah. All right, and all those pieces put back together. Yeah, at this angle, I do want to just point out real fast, you can see how those fans on the bottom are angled. And so again, they are going to be providing fresh air to the graphics card while also circulating that air up to the top and really making use of those other intake fans so the exhaust out the side and the top uh, can can just pull the heat straight out. That's how rats should always go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was good. Looking at you, Leon Lee. <laughs> <laughs> For real. <laughs> NASA grade super glue. Right? Yeah, they are very specific about not wanting there to be plastic on their stuff. one too. No. Right. It, it is definitely a, a, uh, a puzzle. Yeah. Right, I think you can probably definitely see it better on that side. All right. We'll get our power cord ran for this. This is where we'll make use of those fingers on the back we were talking about. this in frame and we'll be ready to turn it on see all the Sweet. RGB goodness on the Jason good perfect <clears throat> all, right. all right moment of truth oh, yeah. let's see what this looks like oh. yeah but that looks great 
Yes, yeah. Yes, yes. Very, very colorful, very bright. So let's once again go over the all of the elements that went into this incredible PC for David in Texas. This PC is built on a Fantex NV7 and it has an Intel Core mm -hmm. i9-12900K processor mounted on an ASICS, an Asus ROG Strix 790E Wi-Fi motherboard. It has 32 gigs of DDR5 6000 RAM and a tough RTX 3080 graphics card. The operating system is a one terabyte Kingston Fury Renegade M.2 NVMe SSD. And of course, it is being cooled by a Fantex Glacier 1 360 DARGB AIO and 12 different GameDS Aeolus M2 ARGB fans. The power supply is a 1000 watt EVGA Supernova. And that is what goes inside of this box. So well done, congratulations. Awesome sauce. Now this show, show, of course, for those of you who are new here, it is a two-parter. So we're gonna take a break in just a few minutes. And when we come back, you're gonna spend the afternoon with Zach as he continues building all sorts of different things. But first, before you go, um, there, <laughs> we you can catch up with all the things that we do and all the great happenings with CLX by following us on our uh, social media that is youtube tiktok and twitter at clx gaming you can also jump into our uh discord where you and like-minded pc enthusiasts can hang out ask questions talk help each other or just find a new friend and that's discord.gg slash clx gaming our show is every tuesday and thursday starting at 11 a.m pacific it's 2 eastern here at clx gaming tv on twitch and we do this every single week you can find codes to get into that giveaway with Atmo Esports all over, including this stream and on mine. There will be some today after uh, once the show is finished. So pop over, say hello. We're going to have some fun with that. Uh, and in the meantime, we're going to jump to a break. So on behalf of Kyle and Jason in production, Paul and Zach, DJ Blue PDX, don't go away. We've got more coming up after the break. We'll be right back. Thank you. See you guys.